once in a long while, I feel like we need to have actual socialists on the program who are trying to run for local, state, federal office. And so, um, all right. Um, hmm, let me make sure that they, everybody can see you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure that you are unmuted. Okay, I believe you should be able to speak. Eat your heart out, Dr. Disrespect. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. No IT department. No <laughs> IT help needed here, brother. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I'm never going to get better. This is this is uh, an intentional artistic decision. Uh, and this is not me bullshitting you right now. It's called Internet Ugly. It's real. Look it up. That's right. Um, gotta, gotta respect the hustle. <laughs> All right, chat. We have two candidates for the Milwaukee County Board. Now, if you know anything about my channel or you're new, I, uh, once upon a time, became a strong advocate of teaching the history of sewer socialism, which was basically where socialism took firmest root in America was in Milwaukee. Um, and I talked about how they had multiple socialist mayors. They elected the first socialist to Congress, who was, of course, denied his seat and not allowed to sit. It was convicted of the uh, under the Espionage Act for protesting World War One, and then eventually was uh, kept winning and got his first seat, where he proposed things like you know Social Security and uh, old age health care and unemployment insurance and all the things that FDR got credit for actually started from good old victor berger the first socialist congressman um anyway so that's why whenever there's socialists in, or leftists in milwaukee trying to run for office i love to bring you guys on and uh, if i can contribute it get the community i have to contribute a little bit to help uh Grow the front of socialism in electoral politics, even in the face of uh, quite a dire situation that we're in today. So, who do I have with me? Uh, I have I have Ron and Alex. Um, and it's what uh, Ron Jansen and Alex Coastal. Am I pronouncing that right? It's Coastal. Coastal. But, you know, okay. Good. Okay. Not a good thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I didn't get the pronunciation guide. Um, Ron is running uh, for the seat currently held by our comrade Ryan Clancy, who's not seeking re-election. So Ryan is in, isn't Ryan in the state legislature now? Yeah, Ryan is currently holding both seats. He's a state legislature and, you know, holding on to this, uh, the county board seat for now. So he's giving up the county board seat and you are running. That's right. Yep. So you are a father and an organizer who's been advocating for policy changes at board meetings over the last three years, and you've been focusing at the conditions in the jail and public yep. transportation, and you're running against the hand-picked Democratic candidate by the establishment that hopes to move it back from a socialist to a centrist dem. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me also introduce Alex, who is a public defender. And, and uh alex i could say right off the bat jesus man how do you how do you handle it <laughs> um there's never a dull day yeah who's been working with a broken judicial system for years and have been trying to put band-aids over the issues he sees affecting our most vulnerable community members you're running to bring systemic changes that help all of our citizen you're running against a millionaire landlord who has had his time in both the state legislature and local seats and repeatedly done nothing Oh, that's right. He likes to bring up how many vaginas of constituents he has seen as he is an OBGYN and has delivered a surprising amount of babies in the district. He sounds like a treat. Uh, so uh, welcome to both of you. Um, if you'd like, I can um, watch a short video that one of your staffers has sent me. I think it's about Alex. Or if not, we could get right into it. Let's watch the video. All right, let's watch the video. This is going to work. Don't worry. Okay. Um, let me see here. Beautiful. 
Alexander Kostel is an attorney working for the Wisconsin Public Defender's Office. He has won six of his last seven jury trials and has achieved acquittals for his nice. clients on several high-level cases, including first-degree intentional homicide and second-degree sexual assault. Alexander has been recognized for his victories with the Wisconsin Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers Hanson Memorial Advocate Award and the WACDL's Sensitive Crimes Award. He has also been a featured speaker and lecturer at the 2021 Wisconsin State Public Defender Conference, the National Association for Public Defense's 2022 Annual Conference, 2022 SPD Defense Team Basics, and he is a 2022 National Criminal Defense College graduate. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing, Alex, honestly. Great, great. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, um, is there anything you guys would like to share with the audience before we get into? I think of this as more of a conversation than necessarily an interview. I'm not trying to write something for the local paper. I'm trying to, you know, have a conversation where we edify each other and we share strategies and we commiserate and we ask for help when needed. So that's what this is more about rather than me doing like some sort of journalistic interview. Um, I hope you were briefed on that <laughs> before you got here. All right. So is there anything you guys would like to say about your backgrounds or anything that I left out? Sure. Um, I'm happy to jump in. Um, I was, uh, I'll just, I'll just say that right off the bat. I used to, uh, do like hyper local radio, which doesn't make me cool. It just means that I have this tendency to try to fill space. Um, so I'll jump right in. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been a public defender for six and a half years and I've also lived in the district for my entire life that I'm running in. Uh, so it makes me a, I think uniquely, uh, proficient candidate in understanding what's going on in our district. Um, but I really like being here with Ron because Ron has done a ton of activist work about criminal justice reform. And then I'm in court all the time, you know, sort of battling the system as a public defender. So we share this, this really nice passion for, um, you know, trying to fix the human carnage coming out of our criminal justice system. Um, so I'm really excited to chat about that in particular, but all the campaign activities I think we both have had a, a somewhat uh, entertaining story about our campaign so far, so I can't wait to jump into it. All righty. Yeah, um, I'd like to jump in, and I want to dunk on Alex's uh, opponent right away, right <laughs> off the bat. Um, Go for it. One of, the, one of the big things that we've been fighting for, um, and specifically that I've been fighting for with a coalition of organizers, is uh, transparency and accountability from our county jail, where there's been six deaths in the last 14 or so months. Um, wow. In a meeting where a report, a request for report about the conditions they were being requested uh, was being discussed, Alex's opponent um, had the audacity to stand up and say that the worst thing about the condition in the Milwaukee County Jail was that the guards had to spend so much time around rapists and murderers, and that that was just the saddest thing. Uh, that was the saddest part of the reality of that jail. Um, pretty disgusting stuff. Uh, he really is sort of a do-nothing guy, uh, and he just kind of makes horrific votes over and over again. Um, and so that, that was not a lot of fun. The good news out of that is that the sheriff's report went so badly um, that it did enable us to get a policy victory, um, and we got budgeted for a third-party audit of the Milwaukee County Jail. Um, that should start hopefully this summer. We might actually get answers into what's going on there. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully we can figure something out. So before we go on, could you tell me exactly what office you guys are running for, uh, what the geographic extent is, and what are the kind of like political gains you're hoping to make within that office? Alex, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so the county board is the legislative body of Milwaukee County. Uh, it's made up of 18 elected county board supervisors who serve for two-year terms. Now, this used to be a uh, sort of a full-time job. It used to pay uh, middle-class salary. And, and maybe like 10 years ago, the county executive sort of led this campaign, the then county executive, 
to chop the job sort of in half. So now it's like classified as a part-time job. And it's made up of a lot of folks who have, uh, you know, like day-to-day careers, but also sit on the board. The thing is, is that the county board is uh, immensely important. It might not be as sexy as like the common council, the city government, uh, but the county board in Milwaukee is in control of our entire public transportation system, the sheriff's office, the county jail, the house of correction, uh, the parks, all of the parks in the county, uh, the Department of Aging, Behavioral Health. There's a ton of bureaucratic things uh, that the county board does. Uh, me in particular, I'm running for District 3, so you know the third district out of the 18 districts. My particular district is uh, Milwaukee's uh, Lower East Side and Downtown with like a little sliver of what we call Walker's Point. That doesn't mean anything to anybody who's not been in Milwaukee or lives in Wisconsin. But what I can tell you about the district is that it is probably like the maybe the second wealthiest district it's kind of mm. like Milwaukee's equivalent of like a bohemian style like uh cool artistic community and then also like a ton of mansions and then like the downtown high-rise residential area yeah a lot of like your standard white liberals uh live <laughs> in this particular area um that's that's how i define the district nice and uh Ron, do you where's your where's your uh, by the way, what's the population of the county before we go on? Do you guys know? It's like just under a million or maybe like no, maybe like one point two million. But our supervisory districts are about fifty seven thousand people per district. Uh, that's a pretty that's a that's a decent chunk of people for sure. But you're making yeah, I mean, decisions for a, for the entire county, which includes the city. Of, of Milwaukee is that right yeah that's correct and it, and it's important to remember too that this is the most populous part of Wisconsin right this of metro course. area um and yet uh we're also the most hated so well yeah uh, I mean, as, it, it, as it goes of course I mean America. it seems like it seems like Wisconsin is balanced between you know the the urban and and suburban environs of 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 Milwaukee and Trump country, to put it like, oh, yeah. to put it lightly, right? You know, Mike, let me just jump in and, and tell everybody something that they might not know uh, about our community, which is that um, things are not so great here in a lot of ways, and it's by design, uh, which is incredibly frustrating. So Milwaukee is a huge economic engine for the state of Wisconsin. We produce a ton of things. We educate a ton of people. Uh, you know, we have, we have industry, we have business. Um, we're a great, diverse uh, you know, working class town. But by design, the Republicans in the legislature for decades have starved Milwaukee of our shared revenue of, of what we are owed from the state. They've cut yeah. us off because they don't like our politics. And this has been going right. on for years and years and years and years. So uh, we are constantly dealing with a, a crisis when it comes to providing human services through the county government, through the city government. Uh, people don't have the resources they should have. Our communities all too often aren't safe uh, and, and folks are really struggling. And it's not because we're doing something here in Milwaukee that's that's wrong, right? Like to buy into this Republican idea that, you know, we're just a, a bunch of idiots here legislating like these left wing fantasy ideas. That's not why we're living in this reality <laughs> because of decisions made in Madison. So it's tough when we talk to voters and what they want are more human services to try to fix these problems. But we have such a small, tiny pot of money to spread around, which is why Ron and I have really been campaigning heavily on uh, actually using the money we have to provide something to people rather than just uh, more levels of militarization for the police or locking more people up in the county jail. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I want to talk to you guys a lot about, because whenever you are, uh, you know, it's not. It's not 1910 anymore and uh you know as progressive politics has developed over the last 120 years uh conservative politics has developed to constrain it and one of the main key ways they do it is by preempting uh everything you do and tying a million strings to all the money you get so you could come in here and say, well, if I had a billion dollars, I could do X, Y, and Z, but you won't have that money because the state and federal government has constrained you to such an extent, both legislatively and financially. How concerned are you about that kind of legislative backlash and control that is going to be extended 
toward you it already exists within the county government um i would say deeply concerned in in one way and then not really concerned in another and that is because as you alluded to in wisconsin it is already really bad um and specifically around milwaukee county so we just had a, a state revenue share deal that went through um and at the city level that forced police back into our schools it essentially established infinite police spending um, at the city level. And so I'm kind of confused about how that's going to work out because we have to both spend more money on police uh, every year and add more officers every year. So I don't know when I'll have to become a cop, but I guess that that's going to happen eventually. I, I don't know. I don't know if we'll have to import people. I don't know what's going to happen. Very confusing stuff. At the county, we got off a little bit easier than that. Um, we did not get forced into infinite police spending, but there was a bunch of stuff that they added to restrain the county. Um, one of my favorites was that we can't do um, like policy preference referendums anymore. Um, and that was a direct response to wow. us working for um, a, pol a referendum on, you know, the preference for abortion access. And so they, yeah, they respond directly. And we do have to think carefully about policy that we're fighting for, because if we're maybe a little too loud and state Republicans get a whiff, you know, in a moment, like in a day, they can turn off whatever avenues um, we're looking to exploit. And so, but on this, at the same time, I think that really has opened a door for me and my campaign, at least, because when I go knock doors, I'm not ask, I'm not telling people anything about the campaign. I'm asking them what they care about, what they want from the county, what kind of services they want to see. And then when they tell me, you know, oh, I'd love to see funding for the parks. I go, look, I'd also love to see funding for the parks. We can't do that because we're dumping money into the county sheriff's pockets every year to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. And we have to stop doing that first um, because we're not going to get our fair share of revenue from the state. And not 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 too soon, I don't think, um, if at all. And so we have to make do with what we've got. And so it it builds itself into a nice argument um, in a way. What do you guys feel about you know the cry? I mean, listen, like you know, I I spent a lot of time in Philadelphia, and you know, at least in the last you know few decades, at least, it feels like to me that the problem of serious drug abuse and kind of a collapse of social services is readily apparent to anybody and it's not that i you know as a leftist i look for systemic causes not individual blame but that being said there is an apparent kind of growth of despair especially among the poorest americans and the poorest you know people uh the most desperate and there has been a total lack of a reckoning with that reality among so many people and what is your guys's strategy to kind of like put us back on a path where we care for people in need and don't use carceral solutions but rather solutions that might actually make a dent like providing housing like providing mental health care and treatment services like you know providing people on the streets some sort of avenue of assistance well you know it's it's really tough uh, especially here in Milwaukee, where we've had uh, a huge increase in vehicle-related crime over the last, like, three or four years. Uh, we have the Kia boys, is what they're called here, um, who have figured out how to steal Kias and Hyundais. Uh, can, we, can, I, can I jump in real quick, just because yeah. I, have, I, have, I have experience with this. Basically, these cars, you can start them with a the screwdriver, guys. Like, this yep. is... And, and I was a teenager once. I was a dipshit. I'm sure within the right context, I could have been a Kia boy, you know, and, 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 and that's only because when you're a teenager, you get, you're in a certain social milieu and everybody's daring each other to do this and you want to look cool. If you make it really easy to steal a car, they're going to do dumb shit. And, uh, obviously I'm not saying this is tolerate. We should tolerate that, especially, you know, but this should. You should be suing the Kia company for their lack of security. So oh, anyway, go on. Sorry about that. No. I just wanted to give the, I, give people a little could, bit of a of a background on that. 
if I could, I'd like to extend that train of thought to you just for a second, which is that what I've, and I've, this is comes up all the time on doors in the campaign. And what I tell people is, look, people that feel like they have a place in society, that feel like they have a life to live for, True. that feel like they have something else besides just blatantly reckless behavior that could land them in a really terrible situation tend to behave in a way that reflects that reality for them. And yeah. in Milwaukee, especially, I would argue that we are not providing those conditions for people to feel connected to their community, to feel like there is a community for them to be a part of. Um, and the lack of social safety nets, the lack of health and mental health care, um, yeah. it, it's obvious. Every single day, it's obvious. Yeah. So sorry, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, no, I mean, discussing it on doors or with voters is tough because you have a lot of people, at least in my district, who I think consider themselves to be proponents of some level of criminal justice reform. And then I start talking to them as a, you know, as a public defender. Um, but one of the biggest issues is concerns about safety, right? So people link it back to, well, um, you know, I just saw on the news that there was, you know, this massive car accident or like just a couple of weeks ago, we had a four car pile up. Uh, like a couple blocks from like a, a key residential area in my district um, caused by somebody fleeing from the police who's like a teenager driving a stolen car, crashing a bunch of other cars. And there was like a flaming, uh, it was like something out of a Michael Bay movie. Not right? good. Right. So people see that and then they say, uh, well, what the hell are we doing about public safety? So it becomes a little bit challenging to talk about uh, the complexities like Ron was getting at and you were getting at the complexities of the type of social building that you have to do to actually do something about crime because the easy answer is just to say hey you know we need we need to lock them up we need stronger sentences we need to be tough on crime nobody wants this to happen right um we all want to see it end but it becomes much more of a nuanced issue uh and usually if you have enough time to talk to like a voter in good faith you can start to address um, hey, you know, we don't provide like young people with recreational services. Our county pools have been closed for a while, right? Like, uh, you know, education funding is lacking. Mental health care is lacking. We have over policed areas in particular. And those feel, folks feel like they're disconnected from the system. But that all takes time to chat about. So it's, it's com complex. It's challenging. But at least what I've found is that most people that I talk to about criminal justice are starting it from like a good faith position. And usually after listening to me, we're, we're able to, uh, you know, come together in an agreement that we need to address public safety from like a public health perspective. So, I mean, I've been having success. It sounds like Ron's been having success. Um, there's just not a lot of folks on the traditional left, I would argue, like the, you know, what we'll call it like the Democrats, right? The Democratic Party that seem to have a lot of good things to say about issues having to do with crime. So I think that, you know, yeah. the social viewpoint, the 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 very leftist viewpoint that we have where we talk about factors and what we can do at least we're offering some kind of solution whereas the the dems don't really seem to have anything to say these days. yeah you know and this is this is kind of like a more philosophical problem i guess or more of a of a, not philosophical but a big ideological gap here where you know the collaboration with the democratic party starts to show its flaws because you know a lot of these problems you're talking about are not unique to milwaukee and it's hard to go to voters and be like, this is a systemic problem happening in every city because federal policy is far too right wing and has been for decades. And they're handcuffing what we can do and don't allow us to have funding for community services. And we don't have a social safety net and we have an underfed education system. And we have a lot of people that are full on despair, disconnected, alienated. And we don't have we don't have any of the things we need to fix this. And coming in with a, 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 a you know, a nightstick and bashing all the 15 year old boys on the head is not a solution that's going to result in a prosperous community in five to 10 years. You know, this is this is something that Joe Biden, you know, when we elected Joe Biden, we kind of put ourselves on this path for a long time. You know, we're going to be dealing with these social issues. Even if you guys win, with all due respect, you're not going to be able to single-handedly reverse these kind of societal trends because there's just not the support there for you. And you have to be building something that is able to withstand that reality that we are facing a, you know, uh, a centrist Democratic Party that wants to tack right. 
uh, and wants to use force on poor people. And uh, I don't know how you are. What's your strategy? I mean, I, I, not to get too uh, prickly, but what's your strategy with dealing with Democratic Party um, stalwarts, the corrupt people that are full, that fill every local Democratic Party? Well, two things, Mike. Uh, you need to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office does also enjoy pinning 17-year-old girls to the ground yeah, and punching yeah. them in the face at the zoo. So don't, you know, make sure you give credit. They're they're big, strong heroes and they need our support. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so secondly, um, my experience, strangely enough, I think me and Alex are having different um, interactions with Dems, especially at the Milwaukee County level. Um, my campaign has been under constant threat by the county Dems from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and it's because I've been a known... Uh, a known person to them uh, through my actions at the county level for the yeah. last few years. And so they already weren't a huge fan because I made all their favorite people on the county board very uncomfortable. Um, and I knew that going into the campaign. Luckily, uh, the district that I'm in is, according to most data, the most likely to be kind to a socialist in, in the whole county. Um, and I think Alex is probably second. And so I wasn't too worried about needing support from them, but I, I hoped to keep the county Dems at bay. Um, I have failed miserably in that. And the Are they dropping them, money on you guys? Are they like sending a lot of, of hateful mailers and things and robocalls and television? So, What's going yeah, on? Th they haven't started anything like that in my campaign yet. And I think it's because they feel comfortable um they the, the one thing that they have done is they skip their entire endorsement process to endorse my opponent um after i participated in a palestinian coalition video um in which i said that i would not be able to vote for joe biden uh tammy baldwin or gwen moore if they continued to support genocide and so that was enough for them to decide that i was not a dem enough uh, and they, I mean, within days went ahead and endorsed my opponent, um, who has not taken a stand on the Palestinian genocide at all. Wouldn't expect that to happen. Wouldn't expect yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, but as, as a socialist, uh, my moral compass, regardless of what this county seat can or can't do about the situation in sure. Palestine, when we're witnessing a genocide right in front of our eyes, I'm not going to miss an opportunity to speak to whatever audience I've built about the need to stop it. Um, with all that being said, despite all of that, you know, you kind of asked about strategy and dealing with this, a secondary goal, and not really secondary, but sort of all together, um, a, a goal of my campaign is to continue growing a coalition of community organizing groups yeah. that I've worked with over the last few years and to continue bringing them to the table. So showing up to get policy passed um, and involving people like, um, I know she probably won't see this, but the mother of Sylvia Therian who died in the Milwaukee County Jail um, has been an incredible advocate. And I don't think without her effort, I don't think we would have gotten the Milwaukee County Jail audit. Um, and I'm, inter I'm eternally grateful for her support and uh I, I can't i can't thank her enough and so it's even those one even sometimes it's just that one person that you bring along um along with the other groups that has enabled us to to win some of these fights and you know it's going to get harder the more that we gain but um hopefully we keep growing the numbers you know as as somebody who has elected socialists myself to city councils and state legislatures and whatnot the one thing i would tell you you know i'm sure you're hearing this but these democratic party shills or these de the corrupt like the local democrats think they're a lot more influential than they actually are um unless they're putting money in the field uh like if you knock doors and meet all of your neighbors and with fifty thousand represented i'm guessing you probably only need to meet three or four thousand voters actually to win this um I mean, this is, I haven't looked at any of these districts myself, so I don't know, but, um, this is very doable. 
uh especially if you have a few volunteers and and people that are willing to keep grinding it out because i know how difficult it can be it's frustrating and it's a lot of work to work on a local campaign um yeah you know mike i just wanted to jump in and and, and sort of give you the uh the rundown on how yeah, go ahead are- feel free to jump in anytime i'm talking <laughs> yeah um so uh yeah so ron and i are running um well we're running a similar race but we're having different experiences and i and i want to say uh, and Ron, I don't know if I've ever told you this directly, but I'm going to say it now. Um, I think that I have benefited from, uh, in many ways, the courage that Ron has had in his campaign, because what's been happening is Ron will take a principal position, piss a bunch of people <laughs> off. There will be a blowback like we saw with the uh, endorsement where the county party decides to endorse Ron's opponent without having any sort of paperwork. Then there's a blowback from that when our comrades like Ryan Clancy, Darren Madison, even some of the like progressive leaning Dems uh, start to, you know, have a have a problem with that. And then the uh, the Dems will like sort of take a step back and then create a formalized process that then I get to go through and then like neutralize my <laughs> opponent in that process. Which is exactly what's happened with the county endorsement, right? So, um, so there was a bunch of blowback to what happened to Ron. There was a bunch of conversations behind the scenes, and all of a sudden, I get an email with an endorsement questionnaire a couple of days later. Um, and you know, through the grapevine, the the conversation seems to be that the county party is not going to fuck me by endorsing my opponent, but rather will probably either co-endorse us or endorse neither of us. So, my campaign has benefited from from Ron's sort of like. Uh, aggressively principled uh, positions. And I just want to acknowledge that. I'll also say um, it's an interesting experience because I'm running against a career politician. He's been on the board since 2016, but prior to being on the county board, he was in the state legislature uh, for uh, a really long amount of time, I think 12 years. Uh, So this is like an entrenched, well-known, wealthy, well-connected Dem that I'm running against, but I haven't really received a lot of the like the hate that ron has for being the first candidate in a open seat election ron jumped in long before the uh you know his opponent did who's like more aligned with the uh the moderate dems but is also a first-time candidate without like any prior political yeah uh, experience so we're kind of having a a two different races (laughs) over which is which is interesting but what i will say is I think that there is a difference between uh, political races that are like more about uh, being aspirational, right? Saying like, I'm running to fight the power. And then there are races that you can win. And I firmly believe, as I said here today, that Ron and I can and are on the track to winning these races. Absolutely. My campaign has knocked over 4,000 doors already. We're on our second pass through the voter universe. We're doing well. Um, And this is is where I'm going to make a request to everybody watching. Uh, money request don't really like doing it not super comfortable asking people for money but here it is um ron and i have very real very obtainable goals that we need to meet to be able to actually have this fight right like it comes down to how many pieces of mail can we put in people's mailboxes True. how many ads can we run on social media there's honestly not even that many costs it's, it's pretty much just that how many pieces of lit can we print how many signs can we get Ron, I want you to tell everybody today the story, your badass story about how Ron flipped a voter. I'll let him tell it, but it has to do with the sign, and I promise you it's entertaining and badass. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that some folks can find it uh, in, you know, in their hearts to support our campaign just a little bit. Any little bit would help. It would help us get that many more pieces of mail into the box, that many more signs in the ground. So we can, you know, we can have three socialists on an eighteen-person county board for the first time in, you know, what a hundred years yeah. ever. Uh, we're we're on the track. We can win, and I feel good about it. Well, the one thing I would say, Chad, is that I see that they have four twenty, six ninety, and thirteen twelve donation levels. Um, you know, obviously there's a two thousand level as well. Uh, if you're if you're interested in that, but what I yeah, what I would say is great job. Uh, the fact that you asked me for money is impressive to me because I, you know, have sub- I've literally done campaigns before, so I know exactly the feeling. Mike, Mike, that, you that have. is that's that is not the ask for you yet. That'll come later. Oh so yeah, I'm well, gonna, I mean, you I'm can gonna need try, you to but... I'm gonna need you to check that uh, that credit union or bank account, whatever you got, and you're gonna need to. 
Start start doing the math. I'll have um, to call my private banker. That's right. Um, that's right. Uh, but I did. I do want to tell you that I'm doing the thing you're not supposed to do, which is read chat. Um, and I think it's really funny because Alex was unaware that I made the donation amounts four twenty sixty nine. Uh, 13, 12, 13, 12. Yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna do a specific number that got one of our other favorite leftist streamers forty seven dollars for for uh, Bernie as well in there from that I think yeah. that's from twenty sixteen that was his average uh, as well um, yeah I, I was I was gonna do another dollar amount that got Hassan banned uh, so but we'll just leave that alone um, <laughs> yeah 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 well, and. Uh, this is one of those things that I always like to tell people, especially who are progressive organizers. Uh, I think I'm going to be having the DSA national chairs on the stream soon. Um, chat as well. Is that streaming is one of the single best places for young people who are actually politically engaged. You know, Hassan and my communities are like prime targets if you're trying to find people. I mean, I see a number of people talking about Milwaukee issues in the chat. One one chatter wanted to know about, you know, like improving the the experience of the public transit overall yeah. as far and as I, I'd love to talk to that. Uh, talk yeah. about that. It's something that I've been um, I've been working towards personally. I will also say real quick, I got to plug this in. Go ahead. Um, Twitch is at least part of the reason that I'm here today. Um, I was. I knew I was left a long time ago, right? Early 2000s. But I never had gotten involved in organizing. Um, and then COVID hit. And we were all locked in our homes. And I was watching way too much Hassan. Way too much. <laughs> Not good for my mental health. It's better than watching on... <laughs> the same, watching Community for the 10th time on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I was, I was enraged, right? Because all of these beliefs that I already held about how the... American government was not going to save us in, oh in times of crisis and, uh, because COVID hit and it was clear that the options were, <laughs> you know, go to work and potentially die or risk staying home and becoming, uh, becoming homeless. And that was really difficult. And so the story goes, after watching a Hassan stream, uh, I'm walking around my house ranting a little too much. And my partner goes, hey, man, you got two options here. Uh, you can shut the fuck up. Please just shut the fuck up. Right. Or you can go do something. Please go do something. And before the before COVID hit, Ryan Clancy, who you interviewed pre previous, had knocked on my door and I ended up trapping him at my door for over an hour talking about <laughs> what we could oh, do. Oh, no, you're one of those. And Yes. And so I remembered his name and I searched him up online and it said, oh, the first elected socialist to Milwaukee County Board in however long. I called him. We had lunch. Two weeks later, I was in an abolition working group uh, fighting to, uh, you know, defund the county sheriff's office and improve conditions in the county jail, do harm reduction and stuff like that. And so I would like to say, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Twitch user. Um, and I know that there's criticisms level leveled against uh, people like you and Hassan uh, that, you know, what They're do they really lame. do? What do they really do? Uh, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that the work you do is important. This is good stuff. And, you know, I would I would engage. I would tell everybody here, don't let this be the full extension of what you're doing in a leftist space. Find an organizing group. Get involved. You can make change. We've been able to do it in Milwaukee County. You can do it elsewhere. Yeah, I I want to um, I want to say that like you know we really believe in a full court press here on my stream, which is you know uh, entryism in the Democratic Party when appropriate, third party when possible, you know trade unionism, uh, you know join your trade union, become active, push it to the left. You know we've we've talked to people who have been inside you know the Teamsters and inside uh, UAW and. And, and a number of other unions and basically like as a leftist movement in this moment we need to do everything we can to grab any positions of power any places of influence where we can you know continue to grow the movement even in a in a period where you know you have a democratic party that's uh, entrenched firmly in a uh, right-wing direction we can make 
local impacts that will redound later when we have another opportunity. You know, we organize now for the opportunity tomorrow. And that way, when we do get an opportunity, it doesn't fizzle out um, because we don't have a plan. And so that's why I think getting you guys elected is so important because you will be that bench that we need uh, in the future. And um, I'm really excited for you guys. I mean, one question I wanted to have, I wanted to ask Alex about the experience of being a public defender um, and the criminal justice system and what you're kind of, not to get yourself in trouble, I don't want you to get in trouble in your day job, but uh, what is your kind of impression of the efficacy of the criminal justice system in America and um, as a public defender? Yeah. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about this. Yeah. Uh, so I've been doing it for six and a half years. It's the only work that I've done since I graduated law school. And before I graduated, I spent my entire uh, final year, the third year of law school, uh, as an intern actually practicing, which is like kind of a weird thing that you're able to do in your third year of law school. You can like yep. functionally represent people. Um, so it's basically been like seven and a half years that I've been doing this work. Um, for the last couple of years, I have handled most mostly high level felony cases. So I am most often in what Milwaukee County calls homicide and sexual assault court. Uh, those two types of crimes are combined. So I'm most often there, um, but I only handle felonies and spend that way for about five years. So when people get to me, when I get a client, um, they are sort of in the worst possible position that they could be in, right? They're either yeah. charged with the, the type of offense that carries a, a life sentence, or uh, up to 60 years, up to 40 years, up to 20 years, lifetime sex offender registry. Um, you know, these are people in, in really serious positions. And as I get to know them, I'm able to see for myself the way that our systems have failed in their run up to this place. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, there are some people I'm sure that have had all of life's uh, privileges and still decide to, to go out and like commit a sexual assault or something like that. This isn't to excuse some level of, you know, obviously personal choice when it comes to crime. There's still agency there. There's still agency. But in general, I'm able to see, especially when it comes to uh, gang violence, uh, crimes of poverty, right? Um, and homicides too, right? That you get to see the way that uh, lacks, you know, lacking resources in our education system, in just the way that uh, folks have access to housing, to food, uh, to just the quality and dignity of life. Uh, you know, Milwaukee is the most segregated city in America, right? It's uh, living here, and, and I love Milwaukee. I want to live here forever. I want to raise children here. But it is a painful, brutal place to live if you're a person of color. Um, we have an entire part of the city that's like 40 or 45 percent of the city, I would say, that uh, is where almost all of the African-American folks in the community live. And then we have a whole nother section of the city. That's where all the white people live. And then a whole nother section of the city where all the, uh, you know, Latinx people live. And um, that's just kind of the way it is. And when I traveled around in my life to other cities, sort of like later on and realized that that's not necessarily how everyone else's places of living are, I got to realize how screwed up things are here. So in a day-to-day, -day, you know, place, I'm trying to, like you said earlier, sort of put a Band-Aid over, uh, you know, the human carnage in the criminal justice system, right? Get this one person away from spending 25 years in prison or from a, just a felony conviction that's going to, you know, put a black mark on their, their life for the rest of the time that they're alive in America. Um, and it's, it's grueling. Uh, and I, I love what I do, but it's really fostered in me a desire to try to sort of stem the flow uh, of folks to the criminal justice system on a macro level. And I tell that to people on doors all the time. Uh, because when you do this work enough, you realize that there are such a large amount of people suffering uh, with a system that, you know, I don't really think sees them as individuals. Your average judge in felony court is going to send, you know, tons of people to prison every week, right? They're going to sentence people with felony convictions every week. Uh, so when you're on the bench for years, do you even see each individual as a person with their own lives and families and people who depend on them? I don't know, right? Uh, I think there are a ton of reforms that need to be made, but we need to do the work uh, that, that Ron and I are hoping to do and that Darren and Ryan are doing in our state legislature. And, you know, even above that and above that to try to stop mass incarceration because it's killing our communities. 
Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Um, you know, it's when when people get to the to the criminal justice system for a serious felony like that, there's been about an 80 failures in their life uh, usually. Um, and I think that a lot of people um don't see how the other half lives, you know. If you're a relatively stable white person living in a middle class house, it's hard to have any kind of understanding of the dire situation that so many people live in. And uh, that's why like even, even small programs like you guys can push for can make a big difference in the future. Um, so I really wanna thank you guys for taking that on. I know how uh, much effort it takes to, to run for office. So I, I think that's why we're all supportive and why we brought you on because I wanna show people that you can grab together a few people and start running for local office. And at least whether or not you win, you can learn and get experience so that eventually you will, you know, this every, you know, every year is another election, right? You know, and uh, when I talked to um, uh, Representative uh, Clancy, um, he was, it was still aspirational at that point. And before you know it, you know, you're moving up the ladder, you're causing, you're, you're introducing uh, legislation that would never be considered, you're making arguments that would never be made, and you're forcing uh, everybody to acknowledge these viewpoints that in many other places of the world are totally their policy, you know? Um, uh, yeah. I know, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time in Vienna and when i got off of the public transit where they don't enforce fares you know it's an honor system and i step uh into the beautiful streets right in front of karl marx hoof which is the largest public housing uh building in the world and i go to uh angles plots and it's normal it's normal to have high quality public transit it's normal not to have people living on the streets it's normal for an 18 year old to be entitled to their own apartment at $200 a month. And this is not a shitty apartment. This is an apartment, a beautiful brand new apartment. This is the type of thing that we could have. It's already been demonstrated and it's not hot pie in the sky. It's livable. You just need a plane ticket and you can see it for yourself. So that is why I, I, I bring you guys on and I, I appreciate it. Is there any like actual program that you guys are running on like any ideas that you want to see implemented that you think you can get done so for my for my campaign um it, this will address the chatter from earlier um one big thing that i'm going to be pushing for this year no matter what happens in this election is uh, a transit safety proposal that came out of a transit safety task force last year which i thought was really a model way of of governing um, the county brought together um, transit operators. It brought together, unfortunately, leaders from the county transit system, which is a quasi-private entity, so it makes things a little more complex. Um, it brought together county supervisors and bus riders as well. And what we found there was that just like no one felt safe. And so that conversation happened, and then that group of people continued to meet, and they said, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to, what kind of proposal can we create? Um, and I participated in this um, task force, and what came out of it was a proposal called Transit Rangers. And so we decided that, of course, we can't have police doing it because we don't need more dead people um, in the street. And so we don't want to bring in people who are uh, inherently violent. Um, and so this would create a dedicated team of individuals who are not law enforcement officers, but have de-escalation training and stuff like that. Um, and their sole purpose would be to show up when someone from the bus calls for help. It would also create, uh, it would also include housing liaisons, because actually the largest number of calls on the transit system is for folks sleeping on the bus. So folks who are using the bus for shelter. Um, and this proposal, it's not perfect. But it was hammered out using, uh, I don't want to call it a coalition, but through some sort of consensus building model um, through, through by people who have a vested interest in seeing, you know, a change at the job level. And I will share a story that um, a, a lady who was a bus operator shared in the meeting, and it really shook me up. So I'm going to try really hard not to cry uh, like I always do. Um, <laughs> 
And she she told a story about how she was driving the bus late at night and um, someone in traffic had been cutting her off and just kind of driving crazy. And at a stoplight, this person pulled up next to her and pulled out a gun and was screaming at her through her bus window. And she said, I called the transit security people and they said, well, you know, you got to just keep the bus moving. That's the most important thing. <laughs> and she said, um, she said, no one ever called me back. No one ever showed up. Uh, and I felt so alone and so scared. And uh, that hits me really, really deep in the heart because no one should have to feel that way. Uh, you're doing selfless work driving a bus. The number of bus drivers that died during COVID just doing oh, yeah. a public service. Um, and, and here we are, you know, not exactly out of COVID, right? But out of our acceptance that it's something that we need to focus on. We've moved on, uh, many people, and we still can't care for these people. Um, and, and we can't do anything to provide safety. And so right now, a private company handles that. They take a bunch of the county's money and they don't show up. And the excuse from the county is like, you know, and, and from Alex's opponent and people like my opponent, the excuse is that we can't, we just can't spend this money. This is too much. This proposal costs too much. And so, you know, we're just going to have to keep doing what we're doing and, and we'll figure it out. Um, and I'll tell you that that puts transit in Milwaukee County at a big risk because those operators will strike. If it is not this summer, it will be by the end of the year. That might be a good that might be a good strategy to pursue, honestly, I, because I, uh, the pressure from the community, from business, from other stuff to resolve those kind of issues can oftentimes get policies that you don't think are possible possible because uh, you know. I, you know, I'm not yeah, saying that that's I what think, you think, guys have I, a better sense on the ground than me. Yeah, I'm just saying obviously, that I would be talking to the transit union, honestly. Right. Obviously, and I've worked hand in hand with the transit union. I support them if they want to strike. I do have concerns, and some of the people in that union have concerns about what that might mean for the system. The system is in a very fragile state, and any extended strike, I think, could have devastating consequences. And of course, my concern is not the system. My concern is the people. Um, but we need a robust transit system right. in Milwaukee County. You don't County. want this transit system and to be shut down permanently. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, I at least in my mind, I see that as, as a real risk. Um, that's and that's crazy. why, like, that's why we have to win these seats. Um, in my my race especially, Alex's race can add to our, our chicken coop of socialists, right? My race is losing ground if I lose. If the moderate Dem who is running for my seat wins... There is not a doubt in my mind that progressive socialist policy that we have pushed through at the county will be actively undone by this body. He has a lot of money. Um, he hasn't started spending a lot of it yet. We'll make him spend it. He will. You know, He's, you know what? Uh, like Alex mentioned earlier, actually, this might be a good time to tell this story. I am concerned about his supply of yard signs. And the reason is... I just can't stop convincing voters to take his yard signs down with at most a three to five minute conversation. And so that conversation usually goes as all my doors do with asking a question about what that voter cares about. And then I acknowledge that they have my opponent's yard sign. And I say, hey, I notice you have my opponent's yard sign. Is there anything in particular about his policy uh, that, that you liked? And normally they say something to the effect of like, well, he was nice and it sounded like he was good enough on some of this stuff. And I go, well, that's cool. What if I told you he's never been to a county board meeting um, and I've been to probably 100 or more over the last three years? And they go, oh, well, that's really interesting. And I'll say, well, what if I told you that even since he launched his campaign, he's not been to a county board meeting, not a committee meeting. The budget cycle happened since he launched his campaign. He was not at any of those meetings. He's not been to public listening sessions. He is not interested in what the people of this county want. He's interested in maintaining the status quo and the power structure that they have in place there. And he has the backing and the money. Um, you know, I've, we've hustled. We've hustled for every dollar that my campaign has earned. Um, and so it feels really good when a voter goes, well, 
So should I like take his sign down? And I'd be like, yes, if you want to do that, I'm more than happy to bring my sign by. It looks better than his. Number one, the design is fantastic. Um, uh, but also, yeah, I think if you, I mean, if honestly, you my advice, we're talking about my advice. Cause I've, I've knocked 10 to 20,000 doors myself over the course of my life. And I would just say, have signs in your trunk. If you're dry, if you have a car yeah. and if they're yeah. like, yeah, should I take it down? I'd be like, here, let me help you. And just shoot, stick your sign yeah, right I, in the well, same place. I don't touch it. I, yeah, I, I don't touch it. Yeah, don't I get yourself them, arrested I don't seen, for stealing signs. I, I don't want to be seen it. touching it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be seen touching it uh, because they already have enough excuses to hate me. So that's fine. But uh, if you take it down, I'll drop by in a few minutes with another one and we put them up. And uh, we've done that about 10 times over the last three weekends. So we've taken down at least 10 of his signs um, and we've put up ours. And so I think it speaks to the reality that, especially in Wisconsin, Dems have been dragged so far right by oh, the gerrymander, by the conditions here, that I've, I've always been concerned that they won't even know what progressive policy is if we actually do get fair maps. And so with that being said, there's this idea here in Milwaukee that people like ideas like me and Alex are our, our ideas, our values are wildly out of touch that we're somehow insane people who don't understand the reality. These voters want the stuff that we are talking about. Of course. They and do. once yeah. you talk to them about real policy and, and, and I'm, I've talked to Trumpers too. I'm here to tell you that uh, when I started my campaign, I did not limit the size of the, I, I took on, all registered voters. I started knocking every single door that had a registered voter behind it. And I have gotten people who are Trumpers say, I don't like that you're a socialist, um, but I like <laughs> what you're saying about the local politics and I'm going to vote for you. I've gotten emails, I've gotten phone calls. And what I've learned, and I guess, you know, if I could pontificate here to the community, um, let's not get trapped in our own bubbles here and believe that the other side is all you know, completely unsavable, especially at this level, the hyper-local level, when we have real conversations about the things that impact these people's lives, we can convince them that we are the better choice and um, we can win. I, I believe that we can win. Shoe leather works, but, but we you need know. those dollars. Definitely. We need those it's, dollars, it's, it's part, so go it's, check it's out part the donation page. A, yeah, it's part of all of it, and, and I appreciate you guys saying that. Um... Well, let's see. Uh, is there anything else that you guys wanted to uh, share with us? Um, you know, and we can make our final appeals and I'll shill for you at some point. And hopefully that'll help. Um, let's yeah. see. Oh, we have your campaign Mike. websites. Hold on. Let me take a look. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, also, if you could show everybody, just in case they didn't see, show everybody our donation page too, because there's a picture on there of me getting stared at by the Milwaukee County Sheriff, that anytime I'm having a bad day, I look at that photo and it just brings me life. Okay, um, I'm I not so logged in, so it's not gonna show my entire... The thing about Act Blue is when you're a donor chat, you know, as a streamer, it's scary because it'll be like, your credit card is this, your address is this. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And it's like, holy Yeah, Mike, fuck. just go ahead and show them your credit card. Yeah, my please. credit card information and home address and social security card um all right so i'm i'm pulling alex down for one second just so i could show oh no what did i do yeah that oh no uh that photo on the donation page is of me giving testimony demanding answers about why so many people are dying in the milwaukee county jail that meeting was eight hours long um i stayed there the entire time i was not getting paid i took a day off from work to be there um i worked like a regular retail job and she was so disgusted with the the, the content of what I was saying um, that that was the look on her face. And I love it so much. Uh, it brings me life. You know, let me just jump in and, and say Go. one thing, which is that we have two, uh, you know, socialists on the county board right now, Ryan Clancy, one, Miguel Martinez. And just as an example of the, like, importance of the uh, attainability of these offices and then what it does down the road, Juan Miguel Martinez... Uh, you know, public socialist, union organizer. He won by 13 votes yeah. in the election. And well, now can I, can I just make one anecdote before you continue? Bernie Sanders won the mayor of Burlington by 10 votes. The only yeah. reason we even know we have a, a prominent socialist movement was because somebody knocked a packet of doors one day 
uh, when Bernie Sanders was <laughs> running for mayor. And that led to the movement that we have today. You can see the, the I don't want to overly uh, attribute everything to Bernie, but just, just saying that electorally, you know, oftentimes people win by one vote. Yeah, Juan Miguel won by 13, and now he's running unopposed. So, you know, we, we took that seat from, you know, from being uh, just a standard moderate, right, to a badass socialist who is now going to do two more years at least on this board and hopefully much longer than that. So these are winnable races that make a huge impact in the the day-to-day -day lives of the people that live here. And, and you know, the hope is, is that we can build a, a real socialist bench and, uh, yeah. you know, be competitive across the board in, in every local race that uh, that we have folks, you know, brave enough to, to step up and throw their hat in the ring for. And, and hopefully whether Ron and I win or lose, we'll be there as as mentors and as examples to uh, of what to do or maybe what not to do. Uh, for future folks who, who want to give this a try and, and do something to, to fight for their community because, I mean, that's what we need here. Well, thank you guys so much and, and good luck. I think transit safety is like a huge desire for everybody and a great platform uh, issue for you guys to run on. And uh, I'm glad that to see, you know, activists and people who are working in the trenches of our broken system who know where the leaks are and how to fix it are are stepping up so thank you guys so much um is there any uh last pitch you would like to uh say to the community uh uh since we're coming up on your hour mike um i know that you don't yeah i know that you donated to ryan clancy and darren madison mm -hmm, um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the max the cap for me and alex uh is one thousand dollars and one uh that's the most that one person can donate to our campaigns mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know i would invite you to go ahead and put two thousand dollars on that donation form if you can <laughs> what i uh, what i what i what listen, i will ask you listen listen, listen I, that's the hard pitch here's the soft pitch okay? <laughs> all you have to do is give us more one more dollar than you gave darren madison and ryan clancy and then mm -hmm. we can go home and rub it in their face that we I got like more it. money than them out of that. The and, only okay, um, here's what here's what we'll do. Okay, chat. I believe that we should um uh support our our comrades, but I need some promises from you guys that you're gonna burn some shoe leather and actually gonna work for this thing. Hey, you I'm know? already this knocked, is what I'm I want knocked. from you. 3,900 doors myself, and my campaign has knocked 7,000 as of last weekend. Okay, so when is the, when's the election date? You guys didn't tell me. April 2nd. Okay, so you have a little over, a little under two months to get there. What is a reasonable number of doors that you can knock? Uh, between now my, and then. My campaign's goal between now and then, we have a universe of well, the universe was another fifty-five to six thousand doors. Um, I don't know where we're at on that already, but we've already started on that universe, so that's the goal that we we're hoping to hit. Um, so I guess total what uh, somewhere between ten and twelve thousand doors, I think, before about, before that date. It's about sixty-five hundred doors between today and election day for me. Um, I've kept like uh, going back and like running this math and like. Uh, that's that's about what it's going to take, and it's going to be me on doors every single day. Originally, I just told myself like, all right, I'm going to do doors like, oh, in the weekend on. once or twice. But the reality is, I'm out, I'm out there every single day unless I have something else like a campaign meet and greet or like a neighborhood association meeting. Um, I'm out doing it every day. So the day like in March, I have a canvas launch literally the first through the thirty first every single day because um, that's the way we're going to win, right? Uh, with the resources my opponent has, he could pay. 20 people every day to do canvassing so far we haven't really seen it he started doing doors like last weekend um so you know we're about four thousand doors ahead of him now uh but if, if i'm gonna win i need to be out there every day and that's what i intend to do yeah and i would say that you know not all doors are created equal you know so um it's the conversations that the candidate has with voters that are the most impactful and the closer you can do it to election day the better so um all right uh boy i will i will i will figure something out for you guys don't worry um all right uh thank you guys so much for coming on and i appreciate you know see i could tell you've been 
you've been coached because and that's important because that gives me hope that you're actually going to win or you have a shot because i believe that you make need to make the hard ass you need to be uncomfortable you know when you are somebody who is working to change the world, you can't allow a little bit of social convention to bother you, like the uncomfortability of asking for money. You got to get over that if you're going to stand up to a very strong system. So I appreciate that you guys did that, and it makes me feel a lot better. So good luck out there. Let me know what happens. And uh, if you ever need help, feel free to reach out. You're always welcome here in my community, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much thanks for uh, thanks for everything you do. Thanks for your time. All right, we'll we'll try to help you guys out. All right, see ya. Bye. Okay, chat. Let's go over to our next. All right, next thing. I'm I'm subbing if Mike doesn't do it. Okay, you want me? Okay, here's the thing, chat. I, I always I always remind people that you cannot donate to political campaigns if you're not American. You're not allowed to donate to political campaigns if you're not American. But what's very interesting is that uh, we have a socialist movement here at the Central Committee stream. And speaking of shilling, I'm going to show you how you really do it, chat. Right here in the Central Committee stream, we are building a socialist movement. We are providing the alternative uh, uh, media that's necessary. Would these guys get a fair shake on their local media? Would they get the ability to go in front of thousands of people without being attacked, without being slandered, without being interrupted for uh, ridiculous commercial breaks, without being uh, approached with nonstop right wing and police oriented framing? I think not. So if you enjoy this type of content, if you like seeing socialism grow in America, then you need to support this stream. And what's great is even if you're not an American, you can gift subscriptions, you can give subs, you can give bits. You can give it to me. It's an amazing loophole because as long as I don't promise to make a straw donation, it's not a straw donation. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The trick I've learned over the last dozen campaigns I ran is to find people that would volunteer that pay them so they can spend more time with the campaign than they could as a volunteer. We paid $30 an hour, but everyone was doing at least triple the numbers of other campaigns. That's actually really interesting. I like that. That's a good, that's a good piece of advice. <laughs> so anyway, chat. No ads. I just watched five of five ads. Oh, you did? Damn. Well, you need to sub. So anyway, chat, if you enjoy the stream, please consider supporting the stream. Tier one, tier two, or tier three. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can attach that to your Twitch account. You get one free sub a month. That's your Twitch Prime sub. So yeah, if you enjoy the content, please support us. And if you can, if you're an American, throw some money towards our old Milwaukee socialists. Remedial Pikachu, thanks for the tier one. Does Mike publicize his taxes each year? How much is he donating to who? I don't know if you know this, but donating to, um, donating to politicians is not tax deductible, unfortunately. <clears throat> unfortunately, donating to t uh, politicians is not tax deductible. I like they both have webs. Oh, like, look at this photo. Look at this photo. Look at this logo. I'm a fan of Ron and Alex. I hope they win.